everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a video that I've never done before and I'm kind of a bit nervous to film it because I feel like it's going to be a negative video. Obviously it's going to be a negative video. It's, it's products I regret buying. Just a little disclaimer. Obviously the products that I mentioned in this video are just unique to me. Now you may possibly get on so well with the products that I'm mentioning and I don't mean to offend anybody. It's just products that I don't use that often, don't reach for. They never performed very well on my skin and I therefore are now a regret unfortunately. It's not a reflection of that brand, it's just a reflection of how I feel about that particular product. So please don't take offence if there's something I mention in this video that you love or if there's a brand that I mention it's not the brand per se, it's just that particular product. If there's any products that I do mention in this, I will go through why I don't like them. If there's a way that you think that I could be applying them wrong, and maybe if you can suggest a different way of using it, that it might work a little bit better. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, let's get into the video. So the first product I wanna mention, and it is the Meow Perfume by Katy Perry. It's still in the packaging, bought this online. Somebody mentioned it, I think it was Shanix O, or somebody mentioned it as their favorite perfume. And I was like, well, if she loves it, we have the same taste in perfumes, I'm definitely gonna I love it. Now I don't think it was too expensive. I think it was somewhere around the 40 euro mark for a 100 ml bottle. The problem I have with this is not the packaging because it's beautiful. It is the strong, strong scent. I don't know how to describe it. It's a type of perfume that I would love because it's a sweet perfume. A hint of vanilla in it. For whatever reason, when I spray this, it gives me a headache and I suffer from migraines. So the last thing I want to do is spray something that gives me a headache. The majority of my perfumes are sweet and they don't affect me. I don't know how to describe Describe the perfume like the smell is not what turns me off it's the reaction I get from it I feel a bit nauseous when I spray it and I get a really bad headache I love celebrity perfumes you guys know that Britney Spears fantasy perfume is my favorite perfume I love things like black opium I love all those real sweet scents so for whatever reason there's an ingredient in this that gives me or triggers a headache and I just I can't deal with it so the next product I want to talk about is these eye makeup remover pads from Deal so they weren't very expensive they were 149 I bought two of them because I was like oh my god little eye makeup remover wipes that you can literally just wipe away your makeup <sighs> Nah. So they look like this. So they're these little square disc things and I thought, oh, this would be great. So I'll take one per eye. I'll leave them on. I'll kind of maneuver them around like I usually do and then remove all my makeup. No, they didn't do anything. If anything, the only thing they did was sting my eyes. I ended up not using them and I hate waste. So they've just been wasted basically. Now what I might do is I might just apply makeup remover to the pad and use them on my eyes just not to waste them. However, these just did not work for me. I don't think they would work for anybody they didn't remove anything waterproof I tried to use them then on my eye makeup they just smeared and streaked it all around my eye it didn't actually remove any of it they were useless I just they just didn't work for me so the next thing I want to mention are the Catrice eyeliners or Cole Kajal liners now when I saw these at the Catrice stand I was like oh yes white eyeliners, blue eyeliners, the green, black, they literally every color under the sun. Picked up, I think about five of them. And these are the only two that I have left. I think I just got rid of the others or I lost them or something like that. Problem that I have with these is not the way they apply. Like they apply lovely to the back of your hand and they're quite pigmented, they're lovely. But when I go to put these on my eyes, like in my waterline or onto my lids, all they do is scratch and pull and drag on my eye. Obviously the back of my hand is a lot more robust and sturdier than my eyelid or my waterline which is a very delicate part of your face so you don't want to be using products that scratch and pull and drag on your eyes that's what I found these did they weren't creamy they weren't smooth they didn't blend properly they were just they slip and slide they they crease they budge look like that you could just literally wipe them away there was no lasting power to them to get them on my eye in the first place was a struggle in itself but then for them just to kind of rub off was another kind of bummer but they just unfortunately didn't work out for me the next product is mostly about the colour more than the product but a little bit how the product applies and it is the OCC Lip Tar and I think this is in the colour Hoochie so it looks like this it's a purple shade like it's really 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 bright it's really cool on the lips it's really exciting kind of colour but for whatever reason it turns my teeth a yellow shade for starters these OCC products are very difficult to work with in themselves I have a couple of nude colours which I don't mind using as much because they're nude with a bright 
bright color like this you have to make sure that there's a lot of detail like literally are so precise with this I just found it really tricky to use it was quite messy the color kind of slipped and slide it kind of bled outside the lines of my lips what it's been sitting for about two or three months and I see that the product is separating as well the oil and the color are actually separating in it and it just didn't didn't get on with it at all okay this is going to be the most controversial product probably actually I think of another few controversial products in here but one of them is the lip butters from Revlon just don't get it I don't get them I really 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 don't get them if you're a lip balm person perhaps I mean I'm not really that much into my lip balms I look like Vaseline is fine I have two colors here to show you one in berry smoothie which looks like that I don't know if you can see it like it's just a tinted lip balm and then the other one I have here is in sorbet and again it's just a nice bright pink that's them they're not really anything to write home about I just never really enjoyed them I know they're an old product and they're out kind of like a few years now so when I was using them I was like what's the big deal I don't get it these were 10 euro I think a piece or something like that expensive enough for what they are purchase a tinted lip balm for much cheaper if that was the kind of thing I was into they're just not my kind of cup of tea I don't really like glossy lippy product things and I just didn't get on with them the next thing is probably one of the most controversial things that I have in here and a lot of people are gonna be like oh my god Ashley why did you love it but it just didn't agree with me for whatever reason it's the hourglass ambient lighting palette and it looks like this so yeah it looks amazing Amazing and there's beautiful colors in it. I don't get it. I don't understand how to use this product. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. For starters, it doesn't highlight. I thought they were highlight products. And so that's the products there in my hand and that's just what they swatch like on my body. The middle one is quite close to my tan at the moment and then the other two colors are quite light. So I presumed that I could use these as highlighting products. They don't show up as highlighting products on my skin. Then I thought I could use them as setting powders for my skin and all they did is make me look very, very, very shiny. And my skin can get quite oily so the last thing I want to be doing is emphasizing emphasizing <laughs> the oils on my skin and making myself look greasier if that makes any sense I just I didn't get on with them how do I use them does anybody use this product and love it and how do you use it if you do love it as an all-over powder I just felt like they were too shimmery and as a highlighter they weren't shimmery enough and they weren't glowing like when I turned my cheekbones you couldn't see BAM wow glow. All you could see was a slight tinge of a different colour to my cheekbones. I spent about 80 euro on this and it was one of my biggest regrets because of the price and because I never reach for it and I just, I just, I don't know. I'm doing something wrong clearly guys. I bought this product during the summer last year so I only have it about six months and it is the Bare Minerals Concealer and it's called Well Rested. Bare Minerals, they're loose powders, they're, it's a mineralized product and it looks like that on the inside. I don't know if you can see that, you probably definitely won't be able to see that. This is another product that I bought because I was enabled by Miss Shanexo again. She uses it under eye, under eye, under her eyes to set her concealer. When I used this, it sank into my under eye area and made my eyes look crappy. I tried to use it about three times, four times maybe, and each and every single time with different concealers it made my under eye area look crappy. It just caked to that area. It was way too much coverage for my under eye area. I think I work better with finer powders underneath my under eye. I don't have creasy under eye areas. I don't have any problem with any other concealer on the market. I never have a problem with any setting powders that I use under there, but for some reason well rested just made me look like an old haggard out witch and I just... I don't know, I wasn't feeling it. I think I'm gonna try this maybe on no makeup days, you know, where I'm just literally putting a powder on my face. I want to conceal my under eyes with a powder, I'll use it for that. But using it over my concealer was just a bad idea. Bad, bad, bad idea. The next thing everybody seems to love, and I just didn't really like it. Uh, mine looks like a ratchet mess right now, and it's the Age Rewind Eraser Eye from Maybelline. This is like a twisty up product that you use underneath your eyes, and it brightens up. For whatever reason, I just didn't get on with this product. I didn't find it performed very well. It didn't conceal my under eye area, and again, it sunk into my under eye lines, which I don't have with any other products. I don't know, maybe I'll just get a different color. What color do you guys use? What color would you recommend for my skin tone? Because I would like to give this a go everybody raves about it everybody loves it and I just didn't get on with it it didn't work for me would give it a go again if somebody could suggest like the right color I'm clearly using the wrong color there's about seven different colors in the line the only other thing I had a problem with was the fact that there's 
this little spongy top in it. I just felt like this was an area to harbor bacteria and then just to keep reapplying bacteria under your eyes. I don't know. I don't know why. I find spongy applicators like this just kind of, ugh. unless it's my beauty blender where I can clean it after every single use. The next product I'm going to talk about is so sad for me because I love L'Oreal. L'Oreal is my favorite drugstore brand. You guys know that. But it is this, I don't know, dewy ended kind of thing. So the whole idea behind this product is that it's a lip stain. You apply this to your lips, this glossy side, and it comes out like a gloss, which looks quite nice. It's a uh, very, very glossy and bright. Not my color. And then it dries to kind of like a matte. I can't say a matte because it has like huge chunks of glitter in this. Once it dries, it kind of settles into all of my lines and my lips and the big chunks of glitter become really obvious and they kind of emphasize the lines even more. Then you're supposed to apply this balm over it. For starters, I can't tell you how long it takes for this product to dry because it takes ages. So you're literally going around like this waiting for your lips to dry so you can apply the balm. The balm side of it is amazing. I really, really, really like it. But if I wanted a lip balm, I'd buy a lip balm. I don't get the product. It kind of separates all along the inside of my lips and kind of like seeps into fine lines and stuff. I just didn't enjoy it. I presume that's why you use a lip balm over it. The next product I have here is an Elizabeth Arden product. And it's not that I didn't enjoy this product. It's just that the colors in it are so, so so similar to products I have in different palettes. It was a waste of my time getting this. I don't know why I did. I just thought I would love it. And when it came into the pharmacy where I work, because there's an Elizabeth Arden card counter at the pharmacy I work in, I had to buy it. I was just like, oh my God, beautiful, I need it. I've used it about four times. I don't know why I have it. I don't know why I possess it. I don't use it. And that's the end of that. This product, I know I had mentioned in a favorites. I can't remember when, and I know I used to enjoy it, but I started using it again recently and I was like, ugh. Wow, this is a horrible foundation. And it is the Wake Me Up foundation from Rimmel. Now it's way too, way too dark for me. I bought it, I think, when I was in Spain. Was mixing it since that with a lighter foundation. I just I didn't like it. It didn't last very long. It kind of came off on my jawline. It didn't set nice. It looked a bit cakey on my skin. Personally, there is better foundations in the drugstore than this one. And foundations even from Rimmel that I prefer to this one. I think the reason why I enjoyed this in in the early days was because I was on holidays like I said so I was quite tanned so I only needed the tiniest amount of coverage on my skin I just didn't get on with it with this at all even when I mixed it with a lighter foundation it just still looked just too much on my skin I just I wasn't a fan again another product I want to mention is actually from Revlon not batching Revlon I love Revlon's color stay foundation I do love a lot of their lip products these are their matte bombs color burst lippy products. I just don't reach for them. Colors are fine, like they're grand, they're okay. They're just, you know, they're just meh. I don't know, I'm just not reaching for them. I just don't enjoy them. I much prefer a lipstick. So it's not that I regret them because they're horrible products. I always forget about them and they just kind of sit there, unfortunately. Another thing is the Nanique Chubby Sticks. I bought about six of these back when these were popular. The color Curvy Candy. First of all, the problem I have with it is to get a swatch or to get any color payoff on your skin, you need about 10,000 layers of this. And it becomes stupid to me at a point where I'm keep layering and layering and layering and layering a product up to get any sort of color payoff. Like I said, if I wanted a balm, I would use a lip balm or Vaseline. If I'm wanting something that costs 18 to 20 euro, I'm not really sure how much these cost, I want a little bit of payoff for it. Just didn't enjoy it, it just didn't give any color payoff and I highly regret this because, like I said, it was about 20 euro. The next product I wanna talk about is actually from NYX. I didn't think I'd actually have a NYX product in this. Born to Glow Liquid Illuminator. I love the thought of a liquid illuminator that's it there. I just thought it would look beautiful in the summertime, which is when I bought this. I just didn't get on with this. This is in the color 01. When I applied this to my face, obviously I hadn't powdered or anything like that, and I just applied it to the tops of my cheekbones like you naturally would. And what it did was it lifted my foundation off underneath it and made it go very patchy. Also, there is huge chunks of glitter in this. Like, I mean, more than normal. So I tried to fix the mess with the beauty blender by just kind of blending it away, and I just made the whole matter worse. I ended up blending glitter all around my face. I just, I didn't know what to do with this because it was a, a wet product obviously or it's a cream product it just was a hot mess I ended up having to take my makeup off and start again this just wasn't my cup of tea that's all I just wasn't feeling it the next product I have to talk about is actually another L'Oreal product and you know guys how much I love L'Oreal this is one of their infallible
eyeshadow thingies. These are like pressed pigments. They're amazing. I have tons of colours of them. I use them quite frequently. This is in the colour. Oh god, I never even checked. <laughs> Pepsi Coral. And it looks like that. And you would think it was a beautiful colour. You get very little colour payoff for this. Very little. I mean, it is so powdery. So patchy. I don't know if you can see it there. It's no colour payoff whatsoever. You need a, quite a heavy hand with this. It's one of the most powdery and fallible eyeshadows I've ever used. And my favourite one, as you guys know, is Amber Rush. I absolutely adore it. It's so pigmented. It's not powdery. It's really creamy. It's lovely. This is the opposite. I would love it to be like Amber Rush. And this is the only one that I just didn't enjoy. It was just, I think it was a limited edition one as well. The last product I want to give out about <laughs> was the Wet n Wild H2O Proof Liner. This liquid liner I didn't get on with for two reasons. The first reason is this should be a positive, I suppose. But this is damn hard to get off your eyes. Just give me some aid with this because <laughs> it didn't work out for me. I scrubbed my eyes raw to try and remove this product. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to try and get off. And okay, yes, we usually want our waterproof products and especially when it comes to eyeliner, you want it to stay. But I was just really disappointed that I had to scrub the eyeball off myself to try and get this to remove. You know, you shouldn't have to harm your eyes to try and remove a product. A lot of people would be like, oh, that's great. You know, I know it's not going to crease or crack or break. When you're trying to take off your makeup at night and you're literally scrubbing your eyeballs raw, that is not a good thing. The second reason I dislike this was because it was so, so sheer. So when you apply this, First of all, it's quite a watery consistency. It's not very black. I don't know if you can see that, but it skips a lot on the eye. So any bits that it doesn't skip on, it will separate out. It seeps out because it's such a liquidy formulation. The first time I ever applied this, waited like two seconds for it to dry and open my eyes and it creased the whole way up into my eyelid. It didn't dry opaque. It dried quite sheer and then you needed another layer and another layer and another layer and then you were just kind of building up too many layers of eyeliner and then when I went to take it off, that night it was just it was a hell of a mess it was just no I'm much happier with my gel liner from Inglot and when I do go with a liquid liner I love the collection liquid liner it's one of my favorite ones in fact I think even if this wasn't waterproof it would still separate all over the place and it wouldn't be opaque enough for me so guys I am done being an egg Nelly <laughs> I never really do negative videos and I just feel bad even mentioning them but if I can save you some moolah and find out how I can make some of those products work a little bit better for me then happy days you enjoy these uh, disappointing products or products I regret buying, please thumbs up this video. I absolutely adore watching these videos. I find them so entertaining. Does that make me like pessimistic? I don't know. Okay, my loves, thank you so much for watching. I'm so appreciative that you stuck around to the end and I love you guys so much and I will talk to you in my next video. Mwah. Bye guys!